Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, I hear you. So apparently seven wasn't enough. And apparently we didn't go global enough. And maybe I didn't pronounce something right. Roll it. So in this video, we are gonna go deep, finding even more, even scarier, even more mythical creatures and folklore from around the world. Part one is linked in the description. Feel free to watch that after this video, you know, Star Wars style. And also the ranking system from video one still applies here. Starting off with cool, but we could vibe and then progressively getting more scary until we reach, please don't exist. Eight, Baba Yaga. Starting off with possibly the chillest vibe in the world of mythical creatures, we have Baba Yaga. And if I'm being completely honest, the only reason Baba Yaga is on this list is because I love saying Baba Yaga, Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga is a character from Slavic folklore and honestly has a bit of interesting and kind of confusing lore. So Baba Yaga is one of three sisters all with the same name and Baba Yaga specifically, not to be confused with Baba Yaga or Baba Yaga, is described in one of two ways. Baba Yaga is described as a repulsive, ferocious looking old woman who fries and eats children and simultaneously is also described as being a nice old woman who helps out those who are lost in the woods and if you're respectful she'll offer you wisdom. Within the context of fairy tales or folklore, Baba Yaga is just as I described either a donor which in fairy tale context means a character that tests the hero and provides magical assistance to the hero upon their success or a villain which doesn't necessarily require any context or could appear as both being slightly ambiguous with their intentions. Baba Yaga is often associated with forest wildlife and the most distinct traits of Baba Yaga are flying around in a mortar, wielding a pestle and dwelling deep in the forest in a hut standing on chicken legs. With all this being said, Baba Yaga is definitely creepy specifically her horrible complexion and her murderous intent on children and her, I guess, cannibalistic tendencies. I definitely believe I could vibe with her good side and just imagine sitting deep in the forest in some weird hut, smoking on some wizard weed. I don't know about you, but sounds kind of cool to me. So that's why Baba Yaga is creepy, but we could vibe. I actually did meet Baba Yaga once and she granted me one wish. So let me show you what I can do now. Look at the subscribe button. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to Trust Me Bro today. Did it work? Let me know. Let's move on. Seven, Chupacabra. Moving to the other side of the world to Puerto Rico and Mexico with a slightly creepier creature, we have the Chupacabra, which literally translates to goat sucker, which is pretty cool. The Chupacabra is definitely one of the most well-known creatures on this list, but I still will give a quick overview of their physical attributes. There are two primary physical descriptions of the chupacabra. First being very reptilian and alien-like, roughly the size of a small bear with a row of spines going down the back of their neck and reaching the base of their tail. This description is typically from Puerto Rico, whereas the Southwest American and the Mexican description is slightly different. They describe it more as a wolf that has lost its hair and has thin, tattered skin. The creepiness for the chupacabra definitely depends on which description we're focusing on. For me personally, I find the alien-like four foot tall version of the chupacabra much scarier than the sickly dog looking chupacabra. Either way, they're both creepy and what makes them so feared is the havoc they wreak on livestock. The whole origin story of the chupacabra is is that there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of farm animals that had similar lacerations on their neck and were almost bled dry. These attacks were uncommon from any other sort of animal attack that were common for the time in the area therefore creating such a phenomenon. For as scary as the chupacabra may seem, they're only in the number seven spot simply because they target primarily farm animals, which to us really means they're not a threat. Unless you're a farm animal watching this, then I would definitely probably consider putting this as number one. But regardless, we have a lot scarier creatures to cover. So let's keep it moving. Six. Mapingari. The Mapingari is a Brazilian folklore creature said to be the protector of the forest and its animals. The Mapingari is supposedly a former human shaman turned into a hairy humanoid cyclops. Visually, the Mapingari is very similar to Bigfoot with some pretty significant differences, those being having only one large eye 
having a large mouth in the middle of its stomach and having backwards feet so it is not as easily tracked. Personally, I think the most terrifying thing about this creature is their physical appearance. Not much is necessarily known about their behavior besides the fact that they have a smell that is so horrid that it is able to render people unconscious and the fact that their roar is so loud it is deafening to humans. Both of those are very scary as well too, but for me, the Mapangari is most terrifying based on looks alone, which is honestly pretty impressive. Like if you were in the woods and smelt some something so putrid you felt lightheaded and about to pass out, you turn around and see a one-eyed, tall, hairy creature with a mouth in its stomach and backwards feet, you would probably be terrified. Even if they didn't do anything to you. Even if they just walked away. Even if they handed you a free cupcake, you still would be terrified. I rest my case. Moving on. Five. Corpo Seco. Now, staying in Brazil, we have Corpo Seco which is a dried old skeleton. Corpo Seco is a cursed person, a kind of undead that is condemned to roam the earth forever. It happens when one commits a sin that has no chance of being forgiven. After they die, his spirit is not accepted by God nor the devil. The earth itself rejects that body as if it were disgusted by the sinner. Thus, their dry body, only skin and bones, leaves the place that they were buried to wander during the night. Their only action is to terrify those who see them. Other key elements of their frightening appearance is their long nails and hair, which never stop growing. Although Corpo Seco is only claimed to have the purpose of scaring individuals, it is very well known that the Corpo Seco is evil in nature. Very evil. It is claimed that during his life, he beat his own mother to death for no reason, which might explain the whole rejected by God and the devil and the earth. I definitely believe that the Corpo Seco is creepy and scarier than anything else we've seen on this list, but one thing they do lack is a very strong capacity for violence. Some claim that the Corpo Seco has the ability to suck blood from victims to then allow them to look human again for a few days, but this seems a bit far out there, which is hilarious for this list. I definitely believe that this is the perfect spot for Corpo Seco, and I believe we might see another scarier much scarier skeleton half dead zombie down the list for yokai we now have our first asian entry on the list yokai yokai are a class of supernatural entities and spirits in japanese folklore yokai are not demons but they're not angels either they are a spiritual entity and their behavior can range from malevolent to mischievous to even benevolent to humans, depending on how you contact them. For the yokai, their looks vary almost as much as their intentions. They're often described as having animal-like features, such as the kappa, which is depicted as a turtle, or tengu, which is commonly depicted with wings and considered a bird of prey. Although other yokai can appear humanoid in appearance, whereas other yokai resemble inanimate objects and others resemble no discernible shape at all. Yokai are typically described as having spiritual or supernatural abilities with shape-shifting being one of the most common traits associated with yokai. Could you imagine just like trying to show your friend what a yokai is with examples? Hey bro, check this out. Uh, what is it? Do you see that animal-like creature over there? Uh, yeah, it's creepy looking. Yeah, that is a yokai. And even though it looks creepy, it's actually benevolent to humans and is pretty cool. Oh, oh, cool. Hey, bro, check this out. Uh, what is it? That is a chair, and it's also a yokai. Uh, okay. Yeah, he's very mischievous and will play pranks on you. Okay. Hey, bro, check out that cloud of undistinguishable gas in the air. Uh, yeah. That is also a yokai, and it's gonna kill you. Oh, great. It's kind of like that SpongeBob scene where it's just like, are you Squidward? You're Squidward? Let me guess, you're Squidward. It's just like, the yokai can either be good, neutral, bad. It can be indistinguishable. It can be humanoid. It could be an object. Like, you're yokai, I'm yokai, we're all yokai. To me personally, the scariest part of the yokai is the fact that they're so indistinguishable and so secretive with their intentions. They could literally be anything, anywhere, with the intention of doing anything. To me, that is just scary. And if I was in a situation where I knew I was to encounter a yokai, I think it would be mental torment, even trying to decipher what is and what isn't a regular object and what is and what isn't trying to hurt me. For me, the yokai's scary factor is definitely within my own personal theoretical factor rather than more of their documented behavior. I just think that their abilities and their intentions are so mixed that with how strong they are combined with how much they can vary, there's a lot of opportunity for scary things to happen. And I think for me, honestly, the scariest part is the unknown in that. Three, Nishi. 
I feel like I've been rambling probably more than I should be, so I'm going to try to keep it a little bit more concise for the top three here. This one, like, honestly, most of the entries on this list was a comment on the last video, so if you want part three, comment your favorite here. But Nishi is a Bangladeshi folklore, and it's honestly quite interesting. I feel like the best way to describe Nishi is almost like a mix between a skinwalker and Yorona. In Bangladeshi folklore, Nishi is a ghost or spirit that appears at night. The Nishi calls out to a victim at night with the voice of someone close to the victim. The Nishi also takes the form of that voice. However, they keep their distance to make sure that the victim isn't able to fully identify who is calling on them. The Nishi walks very fast and keeps a large distance ahead of the victim and usually leads the way to a deserted area where it can reveal its true form to the helpless victim and then almost certainly kill them. One important thing to note about the Nishi is that they cannot call out more than twice. Thus, the Nishi can be identified if it calls out a person's name no more than two times and only at night. Much about the Nishi is honestly unknown, but one thing I would recommend is if you hear your name called twice at night and you think you see a loved one or a friend off in the distance, don't follow them. The ambiguity and the sheer simplicity of Nishi is terrifying, but we still have two more to go. Two, vampire. Vampires by far are the most well-known and most documented creatures on this list. This was actually going to be number one until I learned about the number one I actually put in place, which we'll get to in a minute. Like I mentioned, vampires are well-known, so I wanted to focus on attributes about vampires that are potentially less mainstream. First things first, vampires feed on vital essence. Not just blood, vital essence. Generally in the form of blood, but the vital essence could be any life-bearing fluid from a human being. So there's one little idea, wink, wink. Does that make them scary? No, that honestly makes me feel another way, but I'm not gonna talk about that right now. Anyways, I think the scariest part about vampires are how strong they are. Watch Batman versus Dracula. That's a real animated movie and it's dope. And he almost beats Batman. Obviously Batman wins, but only by the skin of his teeth. Dracula and vampires in general are super strong and almost immortal besides their few pitfalls being sunlight, garlic, and a stake through the heart. In more modern depictions, vampires come across as charismatic and sophisticated, typically being scholarly and well put together. And if you watched our serial killer video, you'll learn that this is the perfect disaster to be swooned by someone who has darker, deeper plans for you. I think my favorite part about vampire lore is how many aspects of it are based in reality and are well documented. For example, during the 18th century, there was a frenzy of vampire sightings in Eastern Europe with frequent stockings and grave diggings to identify and to kill these potential revenants. Even government officials engaged in the hunting and stalking of vampires. Despite being called the Age of Enlightenment, during which most folkloric legends were quelled, the belief in vampires increased dramatically, resulting in a mass hysteria throughout most of Europe. The panic began with an outbreak of alleged vampire attacks in East Prussia in 1721. The first officially reported involves a Serbian man who died and then came back to life to ask his son for food. When his son denied him food, he was found dead the following day. Just imagine, it's the 1700s, you're just chilling. Your dad's been gone for a day, but that's kind of normal. You didn't realize he was dead. You see your dad come up to you, he's looking all weird, dirty, and he's like, hey son, can you get me some 1970s food? And you're like, no, get it yourself. What are you talking about? Get out of here, you messy guy. And then he just gets on you, sucks your blood, and you die. Crazy. But not as crazy as our last and final entry. One. Dragar. Dragar by far is the most powerful, most deadly, most scary mythological creature on this entire list. Dragar is a Scandinavian folklore and is described as the following. Dregar is an undead creature, an animated corpse that inhabits its grave, often guarding burying treasure. The Dregar is a terrifying, zombie-like mythical creature who roams the earth looking for victims. They are infamous resurrected corpses of Viking warriors. These creatures are often described as having a strong stench of rotting flesh and a black and blue skin. Just picture a Viking, but zombified with blue skin, an exposed skeleton. That's basically what they look like. As far as smell, without going Going into detail, just imagine the worst smell you've ever smelt. Rotting flesh, disgusting, just 
Just horrible, strong odor. That's just the beginning. The scariest attribute about them is their supernatural strength. Their physical strength is already supernatural and incredibly strong, making them fierce and almost undefeatable warriors to mortals. One of their scariest and potentially strongest supernatural strength is their ability to control the weather, tell the future, and make their way into their victim's dreams. This basically means that if you have any issue at all with one of these creatures, it is a never-ending hell. Even if they're not able to get to you, even if you are consistently running and hiding, you will see them every night in your dreams. They will know where you go as they can predict the future. And if they do find you, their physical strength will overpower you instantly. The sheer aesthetic and the sheer power of these creatures has made them the absolute scariest on this list for me personally, and I really hope they don't exist. I guess what I'm trying to say, and the point of this entire video is, if something smells bad, it's probably a mythical creature. And if somebody smells bad, they're probably a folklore killer. Trust me, bro. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. This was part two. If you want to see part one, the link is in the description. Thank you guys so much for the support and the recommendations in the last video. And with that being said, see you next time. Trust me, bro. Who's that Pokemon? Trust me, bro. My, my name's actually Brody.